Yes, well, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, we've had uh, nine practices. Um, kids are pr uh, working really hard. Um, love my team. Uh, really like our work ethic. Um, again, y'all heard me talk about you know where I think we are as a chemistry-wise, our culture and our locker room and things of that nature. And uh, this team's an older team. They're a veteran team, and uh, so I'm really, you know, I'm really excited about the potential of what this team um, has to has to offer for the season. I think we've got some individuals that will be nominated for some preseason stuff, but it's just like those preseason awards that they came out with last week. They really don't mean anything. you got to go live it. You want to go earn that in, in March, in April, and uh, what, what somebody thinks about you in August and September and early October is it's nice, but really doesn't mean anything. So we're in the process of trying to go earn it. And um, just again, uh, really pleased with where, where this team is and how hard they're working. Um, speaking of one of those players, uh, Rory, obviously preseason um, MVP at this conference, but last year she struggled a little bit with her shot. What have you seen from her this off season? Where do you feel she's at um, in that aspect of the game? You know, she's really uh, taken it upon herself this summer and carried it into the fall. She's worked so hard on her shot, and uh, I've seen lots of improvement in that area, uh, consistency. Uh, but that's a that's what you want to see with, with your players. You don't want to see them come to the gym and work on the things that they're really good at and they're comfortable with. You want to see what the, you know, you want to see them come in here and work on those things that they're really uncomfortable at. And so she's really worked hard on her shot, and. Uh, um, I know she's got a lot of confidence in it, and I certainly do as well. So I'm really happy for her, pleased uh, with her progress. What's um, kind of the current status of your Jordana um, LBA, that, that group? Yeah, so Jordana um, has been, she's been cleared for 50% of practice. Um, today she'll be off, um, and then she'll start back up again tomorrow. We'll do that this week. Next week it moves up to 75%. And then we'll reevaluate where she's at at, at that point. But she's uh, she's been cleared to do 50% of the load of, of a normal practice. So uh, excited for her. I know she's excited to get back into the fray a little bit. Uh, Amo is uh, cleared for non-contact and um, uh, half court, uh, a little bit of half court uh, contact. But uh, being really careful with her. We'll reevaluate her in two weeks as well. Dr. Ellens is on top of her and doing a great job. She's been, she's really gotten better in the last two weeks, I think. Her, she's just really, um, I think she's getting more and more comfortable. Um, certainly when you have those types of injuries, you're never, uh, you know, pain free. Uh, but I think they're learning to deal with it. And uh, again, uh, really pleased with how they're coming along. Still limited though. So, Go ahead. Okay. so recently, I'm just looking more into the future, some four-star players, five-star players committed to Texas. I just want to know like, what's the most exciting thing about having them coming in as part of the class of 2024. Yeah, so you, <laughs> this time of year, we're not able to, to, uh, to comment on uh, what potentially could happen. Um, I can just tell you that my staff has really, really been great, uh, working tremendous, working extremely hard and uh, they've done a tremendous job and we'll continue to, to work on that on the recruiting front. Um, you know, we had some, some, we had some work to do when we got here and it's not anything that gets done overnight. And, uh, but uh, just, it's really exciting when you're, you're a coach here at a program uh, like this at the University of Texas and you have so much to offer and, and, uh, and sell to, to a young person. You know, it's just a great time to be here at the University of Texas uh, when you're, you're you're at a place with so much prestige everywhere you look at. I mean, it, from an education standpoint, top ten in the country. Um, you know, President Hartzell, he's, I say this all the time, you know, it's when you have that type of ranking, it's not because you have pretty buildings on your campus. It's the guts that's in those buildings. That's what make up a, a, a ranking in, in I think that speaks to his recruitment of the best teachers in the country 
and then it speaks to those those professors and who they are and how they go about their business here at the university in teaching our 52,000 students that we have here. So it's, uh, it's, it's really an incredible place, obviously, um, from an athletic standpoint, uh, you know, proofs in the pudding with the, all the, the championships that, that have been won here just recently, not to mention throughout the course of time. Um, it's just a place of, of where only elite live, you know, and we talk about it all the time with our team, elite is a choice. And, uh, you know, that's the choice that is the University of Texas. So excited about it. Uh, you know, when we get to November and we have signing day, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk a little bit more in detail about that. Coach, uh, Leah Van with Lone Star Live, uh, nice to meet you. Um, I know that Madison Booker is now on campus and just want to know what she brings to this team and uh, what you've seen out of her so far. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've been recruiting her a long time. Uh, so glad she's here. She's, uh, as I think I've said before, Madison's won three gold medals for USA basketball and hadn't played a minute of college basketball. It's pretty unique. Um, and uh, she's, she's really special, going to be a monster, going to be so good for us. Uh, probably the second best passer on our team behind Rory. Um, you're probably going to see Madison play some point guard for us. Uh, she's very comfortable with the ball in her hands. Um, she is she is really skilled, really talented, uh, very cerebral kid basketball wise. Just sees the floor extremely well, knows the game. Um, she's fun to coach, you know. She's and I tell you what, I bet it, I bet if I had 14 other players standing here, they'd say she's fun to play with um, because she's unselfish to a fault almost. Sometimes I want her to shoot it more than. She enjoys the pass as much as she enjoys the shot. And uh, she's uh, just a big guard, hard to get to her, great handles. Uh, like I said, her court vision is really, really special. So she got a motor, and uh, that's always important for me. And uh, so I'm excited about her. And really just, like I said, we're really excited that she's here at the University of Texas. Given do you think um, this summer helped Madison add it to just the international stuff they got to do in the competitions? Yeah, I think any time you can play games and keep score and uh, be held accountable and play at a high level, I think it does nothing but helps you. And uh, certainly both those kids uh, had that opportunity. There's also the the pride factor of representing your country. Uh, I just think that, you know, for both those kids, it really means something. It wasn't just a chance to go play basketball. They, they, they knew that they were playing and representing their country. And to both of those, young ladies and their families. I think that that has a real value to it. You have to appreciate that. So I think both those kids got, you know, a month of highly competitive practices and games that the rest of us didn't get. So I, I think there's a value to that for sure. Given uh, both your uh, Mississippi ties with Madison, where she grew up and the time that you spent there, do you remember when you first started recruiting her and first were able to get in contact with her and her family and all that? And oh, for sure. Yeah, and then just what what was that like back then? Yeah, well, I know we had her to campus when she was still a seventh or eighth grader, you know, really young, her mom. And um, I, I just uh, remember having her sitting under that tent that day. It was probably in September and hot as you know what. And, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking, okay, I got to get this junior here that's fixed to be a senior, or this senior that's fixed to come out. But here's this really good seventh or eighth grader at the time and, you know, know me I'm, I'm thinking i hope i'm around when she's ready to come out you know and and uh, you know it, it's always fun looking back at those times and and then just following her watching her career watching her play for for doug bush uh, in, in uh, alabama uh, in aau and and uh, just seeing her grow you know and, and just watching her and, and being there when she wins the state championship you know in the coliseum mississippi coliseum and, so, you know, I've, I've seen her really grow throughout her course of her whole high school career. And it's, it was fun, you know, and then to get her here, like, she just keeps getting better and better, y'all. And uh, so, again, it's, it's a, she's gonna be, she's gonna be special, you know, and sooner than later, you know, she's gonna really be good. She's gonna help us win a lot of games here in Texas. Go back to something she, she asked. I know you're not allowed to talk about specific players, but. Just overall, big picture, how much has recruiting changed since the last couple of years? Like how much are 
parents grilling you about the transfer portal and NIL and just all, how much has recruiting high school players changed? Yeah, I think it, it's, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not going into a lot of detail. It, it just gets different every year, Danny. I mean, it's just, it's the nature of our business right now and how, how the game, how athletics has changed. But for us, I'll be honest, we, for us, it's all about relationships. We haven't changed in that regard. Um, you know, that's the thing I think about when you talk about the kids that we're recruiting currently and whatever class you want to talk about. My staff is so good uh, at building the relationship piece. And uh, I think, um, again, as, as we get to that November signing day, we, we can circle back on this, but you know, for us here at Texas, we're, we're in, in women's basketball, we're all about the relationship piece. And, and my, our staff and I, we're, we just really believe that that's, that's where it starts and ends. Uh, certainly you have some other factors that go into it nowadays with NIL and the portal, but you know, we didn't take anybody out of the portal this past year. The year before we had to take four because we needed a lot of help. Um, this past year, we didn't take anybody basically uh, because I believe in the kids that I got. My young kids need development. They need to play. Uh, I think they're going to be able to play. And then we're currently, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy that believes in recruiting freshmen. You know, I don't want to take away those opportunities from high school kids, um, you know, if, if I don't have to, because if we can recruit them, retain them and develop them, to me, that's the, that's the, the key to success. And, uh, and so uh, for us, uh, that's kind of always been our philosophy and it will continue to be. Are you surprised that this off season kept everyone? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I, I think our kids uh, believe in us, believe in what we're doing. They, they know it's a process. I think it speaks well for their families, for their parents, um, for, you know, the values that their folks have. And I think that gets lost sometimes in today's world. And um, I just think for our kids, um, they understand that it's a process, that, uh, you know, they're just, they get it. And, um, and so, and again, for me, uh, I'm committed to those kids. We're, we're committed to developing them and playing them. They need to play, you know, the, the, they're good enough. We've got to keep working with them and developing them. But I love the fact that, that we've got that, that continuity. And then, uh, I mean, our young kids that we have now, they're good enough. Uh, you know, um, they, they're going to get coached. They're going to get developed. And, and we need Booker. We need Gisela. We need Abby. Those kids have got to work every day and get better. Um, Abby doesn't have to be quite on the fast track like G and, and, uh, and Madison do. do but. Uh, you know, we've got two veteran five players in front of her, but those other two, we need them to, to, to be ready. And, uh, you know, right now, I think both of them are on, on track to, to help us this year. Having the results of the Louisville game around the facilities, how do you think that's affected the players and how they're, like, coming into this? Well, if you'll notice, I think there's not that anymore. We don't have those up anymore. And quite frankly, I got tired of looking at it. So. Um, but I, I think it was just a, a, ni a nice reminder. And uh, I think they understand that that's, you know, it's just, uh, it was something that we needed to not forget and, uh, and to continue to, to, if you needed a reason to get up in the morning and come to work, there was your reason. Uh, but I, I really don't think, you know, in the long haul with these kids, I think they're all excited about this season. They're excited about this team. We're a little bit more of a veteran team. You know, we've got some older kids. Uh, potentially, you know, uh, we could only lose one player. Much like last year going into this year, we could potentially be going into the SEC in a year with, with only one loss with, with Shaley. So, um, and that's what you want to do. You want to continue to build it from the ground up, and then you get to where you're just rolling out four and rolling four more in, and everybody moves up the ladder. And, uh, so. If you look at our record uh, in Mississippi State, when we, we went, you know, uh, 34 and 5, 37 and 2, those years we lost four starters, if I'm not mistaken, going into both those seasons. And, uh, and uh, 33 and 3. Uh, the, 30, 30, the 37 and 2, we had just lost four, and the 33 and 3, we had just lost four. And 
so but we had kids ready to step up and uh, that's what I think you do in any program no matter what the sport you got to have kids ready to step into the ne their next opportunity and uh, that's our job as coaches to get those kids ready why did uh, Sarah earn a scholarship you know and she's uh, she's she's the ultimate teammate um, if me and you were going to pick teams for horse she's probably going to go in our top two drafts she make shots uh, her and Rory started the whole coming in early staying late this summer uh, in early June those two were in here and then it, it kind of gradually involved the Rory and and uh, Shaley and her and then next thing you know I got my whole team in here but she's uh, she's earned her way she can play at this level She's a great teammate. She has their respect, and she has my respect. And uh, I like rewarding kids that are all in, and she's all in. And uh, always glad to do that for somebody that I think has earned it, and she's earned it. <laughs> Don't make me name the, uh, <laughs> the titles. <laughs> I like the ball, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's hard to hard to it's hard for me to keep up with titles today, Danny. <laughs> really hard, but uh, no, it's all good. Thank y'all for being here. Ask Appreciate it. Kiss, kiss is coming in a couple. Of weeks. I'll be there front row, brother. <laughs> that's my music now. That's my genre. Isn't that, that, that what they call it? Your genre or whatever? Yeah, that's my music. I uh, I tell you, the best concert I've ever seen. And, and y'all, I've seen a bunch in my younger days, but the one they had here with with the uh, who did I go see over here? Uh, oh, uh, 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 Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh. It was the best. Like those, you talk about pros. Like those guys still got it. Like three of those guys are still part of the original crew and the music was just off the chart. But I just thought the whole production was elite. Like it was just incredible. Of course, I'm sitting there thinking back, okay, when this song came out, how old was I? And what was I doing? And might not have wanted to think about what I was doing, you know, but then, then, who, who was with him? Who was with the Earth, Wind, and Fire? Uh, the uh, come on. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, you do. Um, uh, the guy, he's like seventy-four now, seventy-five, seventy-six. Uh, Lionel Richie. Richie. So all the while I'm watching Earth, Wind, and Fire, and I am worried about Lionel Richie because they are kicking it, and they're the lead act, and I'm thinking. Poor Lionel, he's, he's going to have to come out. He's got his work cut out for him. And he comes out and he's off the chart. So you talk, that's probably the best concert I've ever been to. Unbelievable. The music was off the chart. Earth, Wind & Fire was incredible. Then Lionel Richie comes out and he's like 30. I mean, you know, he's 70, I think he's 76. So yeah, but I will be front row for Kiss. No. <laughs> You worry. Now, I, ain't gonna have my, I won't have my face painted, but I'll be up front row. <laughs> Thank y'all. Praise the Lord, Doug Horns.